Welcome to today's Facebook Live. I'm Peggy O'Neill. I'm the founder of this group, Answering the Call. And what we're doing is answering the call to know who we truly are and to be able to live in the world aligned with who we truly are. And who is that? What is that? Who are we really and truly? Is that we are one shared being, the nature of which is love, peace, happiness, and fulfillment. And as we know that, then we start living aligned with that in the world. And then for those of us who are also seeking to express that in our own unique way, we begin to discover what that is. What is it uniquely for me? What is it uniquely for each of us to know and live as who we truly are? Welcome. To, uh, welcome today. If you're here live, please uh, put in the comments. Say hi that you're here. And if you have any comments or questions at any time, please let me know. And if you're watching this on replay, love it when you put in hashtag replay. I love knowing you were here. And the same thing, any questions or comments at any time, I will answer them. Today, what we're talking about is why is it so hard to know that I'm not separate? And what you're going to do is learn what holds us back from maintaining the direct path to knowing. Discover how to free yourself to continue to stay on the path to continue to know who you truly are. And how to be reminded of the illusion as well as the freeing insight. Well, you're going to be reminded uh, of the illusion as well as the freeing insight. Because when we see it for what it is, it becomes easier to not get pulled in. So why is it so hard to know that I'm not separate? Well, first, our cultural conditioning. So I'm going to start with the culture. And there's nothing wrong. Nobody's done anything wrong. It's just what happens. It, when we're born into a culture that believes a certain thing and lives a certain way and believes that is reality, then we take that on. We absorb it. We live it as if it's our reality. And you have pretty much most of the world for hundreds and hundreds of years <clears throat> that have believed that we're separate. But we're not. Another reason that it's hard is because we listen to our thoughts. We identify with our thoughts and we keep listening to them. Like this doesn't make sense. You have better things to do. Um, uh, get to work. Whatever we're listening to with our thoughts, that keeps us from knowing who we or makes it so hard because we listen to those thoughts and we believe them. And again, we're surrounded by family. I mean, I have absolutely no one in my family who believes this and is trying to live it. So it can be challenging for a while. It's not challenging anymore to me. Um, so, but that can be challenging because hardly anybody believes it. So, so why might you want to believe it? Well, for one, it's the nature of reality. And I'm going to post a, a link to an article that a friend of mine sent me recently. And there's a quote from that article that I just love and I'll share it now. The self is more like a verb than a noun. To take it a step further, the implication is that without thought, the self does not, in fact, exist. Proven by science, proven by neuroscientists. Okay. And here's the part that I really love. In the same way that walking only exists while one is walking, Walking only exists while one is walking. The self only exists while there are thoughts about it. The self only exists while there are thoughts about it. So I'll send you the article. You can read the whole thing. It's not very long, but it's by a man who studied this for a really long time. Chris Niemeyer, I think is how you pronounce his last name, if I remember that last name correctly. And so again, because we pay so much attention to our thoughts, then we believe our thoughts and we believe we're separate because we believe the thoughts about that separate self that doesn't in actuality exist. So, so first, it's science, it's reality. So what difference can that make? Well, it will end our psychological suffering. What's psychological suffering? Anxiety, guilt, shame, blame, um, pushing ourselves around, making ourselves wrong, maybe making other people wrong. All the things that lead to conflict within ourselves, with other people, with other organizations, departments and organizations, with other nations in the world. So we feel free. We feel alive. 
we're able to really listen for what our dreams are and better able to manifest them. Well, we don't manifest them. They manifest through us, but we're better able to do that because now we're not listening to all those thoughts. We're free of them. So we live with more joy and happiness and peace and love, love naturally for other human beings and plants and animals and, and um, other, uh, yeah, things like that. So, so, so that's why. But let's see what else holds us back from maintaining the direct path to knowing. Well, pretty much I think that's it. Um, okay, so then, well, and then also our emotions. So we've been conditioned also to spend a lot of time and attention studying emotions, looking at emotions. But what is one core thing that has to exist for us to have emotional issues, if you will? We have to believe in a separate self. If we examine any emotion, like I'm angry at that person, that requires a self, me, to be angry at another seeming self. And when we start recognizing, realizing in all of our being, there's no separate self and there's no I to be angry with any um, anyone, that all starts diminishing. I promise you, that's my experience. So I promise it's your experience if you pursue it. Okay, so discover how to free yourself to continue. Well, one of the things that's really important is to read things like the article that I've uh, provided, that I will provide the link for. We've got to educate that mind. We've got to help bring the mind along, along. We're retraining the mind to line up with the truth. So finding other books to read, uh, you can, uh, in the comments or message me or email me at any time asking for books or anything to read, happy to give that to you. I also hold a free workshop once a month. The next one is I think July the 13th, just did this month's yesterday. So, uh, so we, we wanna educate ourselves. So one thing, again, discover how to free ourselves to continue, educate the mind, read this article, read other articles, read books, and keep doing that to keep the mind educated. It, you won't it won't you won't discover who you are that way you'll discover the concept about who you are but the only way to discover who you are is you turn around and look within that's another reason why what holds us back is because we're not used to that we're used to doing something we just want to do something and we want to guarantee that as soon as we do something something else is going to occur so we don't have the guarantees about the timing i do have the i mean i do have a guarantee about your change in experience starts happening pretty rapidly the full like vomp, I got it, I'm se not separate, that can take a while. Excuse me, I just ate, sorry. Um, so, um, uh, so, but anyway, discover how to free ourselves, so educate the mind. Also, it takes resolve, it takes resolve. Ramana Maharshi, I think that's who was uh, this attributed to, but some guru with this said, you have to wanna know who you are at the same time level that a drowning man wants air so not so in our case it's not the franticness of it but it is the but not the urgency of it or do or die it's not that but we have to really want it so it takes resolve which is fine i mean you know there were lots of things we've resolved to in life when i got married the next day i didn't marriage didn't last for long but the next day we had uh, two kids living with us his kids from a previous marriage that were adorable and uh we went to costco so that was my honeymoon <laughs> and so it was like uh-oh what did i get myself into but the resolve set in because i really wanted to be married i wanted to be in a family i wanted to be with this man i had all these dreams um so so but it took resolve it took not listening to all those thoughts and in the and other things that were starting to have me doubt something no i just got back to the resolve i wanted it as badly as a drowning man wants air um, oh i was going to give you another book so i'm going to give you that article and then the book you've heard me repeat ad nauseum being aware of being aware i just encourage you to read that book if you haven't uh if you have read another one of rupert's books or again ask me for books and uh and then um, and then the self-inquiry, and you find that in Rupert's books, but the main one is to notice over and over, it's not a one-time thing, you notice it over and over and over again. You can put a reminder on a mirror or, or on your computer or on a wall to, to 
to remember to do what I'm about to suggest that you do, which is to notice first, oh, I'm aware of everything that's going on. You're aware that you're hearing me, you're watching me, you're aware you're in your room, whatever you're aware of, you know that, well, yeah, I'm aware of all of this. And for you to answer that question, something else had to answer that question. And that's who you are. And so then we ask one more question. Oh, what is it that's aware that I'm aware? And we stay there. We don't really look for an answer. The mind will try to answer or tell you something like this is means nothing or nothing's there or something like that. Just don't listen to the thoughts and just sink back. Every time I do that, like I did right now, I sink back immediately into the experience of my essential nature. And then eventually over time, that comes into the foreground. We, it just, we, we experience it consistently because it's always there. It's just covered up because we pay attention to thoughts and emotions and activities and so on. But what we do is we start not paying attention to that and focusing, or not even in focus, we just relax our attention to who we are and it comes into the foreground. And then be reminded of the illusion as well as the freeing insight. So what's the illusion? The illusion is that we're separate. That's the one great misunderstanding that has us miserable, unhappy, any time of day, uh, that's what has us be that. And again, causes conflicts, causes um, depression, causes, I'm not talking about clinical depression, whatever, if you've got clinical depression, then take care of that in the way you normally would. Um, but uh, so, uh, so we wanna be reminded of the illusion that there's no separate self. There's no, um, that's the illusion. That's the one innocent yet significant profound misunderstanding that is causing almost all if not all of the problems in the world and in our personal lives and then the insight is, is that we're all one being we're one shared being the essential nature of which is love peace happiness fulfillment meaning freedom so let me see if there are any questions here today it doesn't appear so so I'll recap this. Um, oh, well, I've got one more thing. How to free yourself to continue is uh, compassion. You know, just, just be patient with yourself, compassionate with yourself. This won't happen and like it's not an exercise or I can do X, Y, Z a day and lose 10 pounds in five weeks. It doesn't work that way. The universe has its own timing for each of us, which is another thing that makes this so challenging. But what I guarantee you stick with it, you'll almost immediately experience the peace, the love, the happiness, freedom that you are, and it'll, it'll, it'll feel sporadic. But over time, it's more and more consistent. And then someday it'll just really come up. Just You'll be imbued with knowing, oh, there's no separate self here. I have big glimpses of it. It's not totally consistent right now, but I have, I'm, really getting it in my being intellectually i got it five years ago but in my being it's um uh, and you don't have to take as long as i did i had i i made some errant paths <laughs> let's just put it that way so you don't have to do that if uh you know by staying here or, or, uh, or finding some other teacher or somebody else to answer your questions uh, you don't have to take that errant path to take so long all right so how to, how to uh, so learn what holds us back from maintaining the direct path of knowing. I've said quite a few things, you know, conditioning, paying attention to our thinking, our, our emotions, um, uh, not have, being compassionate. So we want to be compassionate, compassionate. Uh, how to free yourself. One thing is to not listen to your thoughts, not listen to thoughts that are self-referencing. Yes, if you have a thought that uh, the, you're getting too close to the cliff. Okay, pay attention to that. The edge of the cliff, pay attention to that. Or a thought that, oh, I want to call my mom. Yeah, now if it's, oh, I want to call my mom because I feel guilty I haven't called her. Well, that's one of those thoughts you don't want to pay attention to. Why? Because it's based on uh, some sort of guilt or blame or shame or something. Doesn't mean a little bit later after you relax that, you know, don't, you know, you let that, 
we don't really let thoughts go. What we do is relax the focus of attention. So you relax the focus of attention. You get to that neutral open space. And then if it comes to you to call your mom, go for it. You can do it even if the you want to listen to the other voice. But that's what we want to quit listening to. Quit feeding those thoughts. And then be reminded of the illusion as well as the freeing insight. Just remind yourself. There is no separation. There's no separate self. We're all one shared being. And, oh, and another way to really see that for yourself is to ask this question over and over again. And you sit with the answer. You don't ask it like a mantra, but to ask it like, do I experience, can I, can I separate myself from the experience of anyone or anything? Can I separate myself from the experience of anyone or anything? Like right now you're seeing me, you're hearing me. Where is that? That's your experience of seeing me and hearing me. It's right where you are. You cannot hear me. You cannot see me without you experiencing it. You can't separate yourself from that experience. And the more we let that sink in, then the more it becomes real that we're one shared being. All right, so again, if you have any questions, please uh, put them in the comments, message me, and I will love to answer them. And I wish you a lovely rest of your day. Bye.